Hi, this is Alex Bennett, and um, I don't know why I felt compelled to do this today, uh, but I did feel compelled to do it. As I was driving home in the uh, in a car, in a limo or whatever, I don't want to say limo, it sounds too fancy, okay, I... Uh, I got the news on my on my watch, okay, that Jerry Lewis had died, and you know uh, it's very it's funny. I I always had a an odd relationship to Jerry Lewis, uh, in that by the way I've never met the guy. Uh, that when I was growing up, I was the biggest fan of Martin and Lewis. Uh, this was the most phenomenal comedy act to ever come along. They had, and I, I can't begin to tell you, because this is like in the 50s, they had the kind of following and the kind of manic following that the Beatles later enjoyed in the United States. There is a film of them sticking their heads out of a hotel room in New York City and people cheering them and just, just, the street packed with human beings. I mean, they, you have no idea how big Martin and Lewis were. And I was a big Martin and Lewis fan. And I loved Jerry Lewis in that context. I came to think that he was just about the greatest uh, uh, comedian I had ever seen up to that point. Of course, you know, I was a, a teenager just coming out of my... I was about 11, 12 years old when they first hit the scene. So my taste in comedy wasn't refined. And so this, uh, what we could we call trained monkey that was on screen all the time, just made me laugh really hard. Uh, later on, I came to realize how great Dean Martin was uh, and how great he was at, at being the straight man to this situation. But I just love Jerry Lewis. I can't tell you how much I love Jerry Lewis. I, uh, I, I I tried to do his voice, and I tried to act like it was his, comp you know, all this thing. Anyway, I, did I make my point? I loved Jerry Lewis when I was a kid. And uh, then I, I started to grow up. And he wasn't as funny to me as my sense of humor matured. Uh, and then it kind of became almost too silly and too over the top. But nevertheless, for that kind of comedy, there is nobody that can surpass Jerry Lewis. Um, what am I trying to say here? Well, I got to a point where I, I wasn't a, a big fan of Jerry Lewis, but I still would go to see his movies. And I remember a situation in my life, which was, I, I had gotten a girl pregnant. And um, uh, I, she gave up, was going to have the, the kid. Okay, now that wasn't the problem. She was going to have the kid, and then she was going to give it up for adoption, and I had nothing to say about that. And I was at about the lowest I have ever been. I remember myself driving around Marin County aimlessly, kind of crying at the uh, while I was driving so badly that sometimes I'd have to stop because I couldn't see the road ahead of me. And finally, I passed by the Marin Theater in Sausalito, which was this uh, uh, this really dumpy little theater. It was basically, it was a Quonset hut made into a movie theater that was, people went to it during the war because Sausalito was a place where a lot of, uh, a lot of people worked building ships and so on and so forth. And there at the Marin Theater was uh, a Jerry Lewis movie. Now, I thought in retrospect years later that it was the nutty professor, but as I looked at IMDb and then placed the time I went to see this movie, it was probably Cinderfella. Uh, but whatever it was, it was a Jerry Lewis movie. And so I figured, you know, what can I do? I, it can't hurt. I'll go and, um, I'll go and watch uh, a movie. Uh, with Jerry Lewis just to try and take my mind off this thing. And so I went into the theater and I sat down and I started watching it. And of course, in my heart, I'm crying. Uh, I'm just so distraught. You know, I mean, if there was ever a time when I thought about suicide, it was then. And I started watching the film. And all of a sudden, while I was watching it, I suddenly realized 
I was laughing. And then I was laughing really hard. And somehow the pain that I was feeling, that he became, Jerry Lewis became an anesthetic to me, to the pain that I was feeling inside. Now, I don't want to be super dramatic about this, but it was a defining moment in my career in which I realized that as much as we think of comedy as being a low art, or what does comedy do for people, I suddenly realized that in that moment, comedy took away my pain. And from that time on, my desire in this business was that at some point in my life, I could do something that somebody was listening to or seeing me do, because I wanted to be an actor originally, see me do, that would give them the same kind of joy and relief from their own personal pain. Because I said, that's what it's all about. So whether you dismiss Jerry Lewis as being just a performing monkey, or that his comedy was too bold. For this kid, it really made me, I, it just, it, it just, it took me away from it, and it helped me survive, okay? So thanks to Jerry Lewis for that. Over the years, I got to feel that Jerry Lewis was, he did a couple of other good films, but his, his, his tour de force was probably on his own, was The Nutty Professor. Uh, which to this day I still feel is a superb piece of comedy. He never equaled that with any of the other things, the Aaron boy, and, you know, it would always be the same thing, it would be some guy in some kind of situation and uh, uh, fish out of water stuff. And there was always the, you know, but in, in The Nutty Professor, he was just perfectly goofy, all right? Uh, as the years went on, his film career kind of subsided because the films weren't great. You want to go see a terrible one, go see Boeing, Boeing. Uh, or go see some of the later films. They were just horrible, in which he tried to play a romantic lead, okay, if you will. And then, of course, there was uh, that, that film that he did that has never been released. We have seen some footage on it from time to time, and supposedly there were people who had copies or got copies and they were shown in, in, in people's apartments, but it is considered one of the worst films ever made, but we've never seen it. So how do we know it's the worst film ever made? But it was called The Day the Clown Cried. And what I've seen of it, well, do you want to know what the plot was? Here's the plot. This was Jerry Lewis's idea of doing a serious comedy. You ready? Oh, you're going to love this one. It's about a clown who leads kids at a concentration camp into the showers. Yeah. And it's not a comedy. It's meant to be his tour de force, and it never got released. Uh, I can't remember the reasons it didn't get released, but probably most of all because it's supposed to be maybe the most horrible film ever made or the worst idea for a film ever made. But anyway, as the years went on, I, 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 I came to kind of have a certain disdain for Jerry Lewis. Um, and my one brief encounter with Jerry Lewis, and this is the one that I've got to tell you because this is an amazing, amazing story. I was doing a radio show in New York City. I, the uh, Labor Day telethon was coming up. And, um, um, you know, um, I can't remember what it was exactly I said. I'm trying to remember it now. But I, I, I was talking about the Jerry Lewis telethon, and I said, well, you know, uh, he's not much of a, I don't think of him as much of a performer, but look at what he's done for muscular dystrophy. And, um, this radio station I worked at, which was WMCA, had been sued on a couple of occasions for not giving equal time to people who had been, you know, we'd had said something about. So that every time we said something that was negative about somebody, they would send them a letter. And so they sent Jerry Lewis a letter saying, Mr. Bennett said that you're not really up to snuff as a performer. 
But boy, you know, you did the Jerry Lewis telethon every year, and that was a good thing. And um, I'm that year. I'm watching uh, the Jerry Lewis telethon, and I always watch the end of the. I never watch the whole thing. I just watch the very end. You know, where he sat down on the stool and started singing, "You'll Never Walk Alone." And he looks out at the camera and he says, "And this year, I want to dedicate our song." To that disc jockey, I wasn't a disc jockey, but he thought I was. A disc jockey in New York City, I just want to say, I hope I'm good enough for you with this or something to that effect. And I looked at everybody in the room and I went, Jerry Lewis is talking about me. He's mentioning me. He's talking about what I... So that was my one encounter with Jerry Lewis. He had heard, he got the letter, he saw that I said that he wasn't a very good performer uh, any longer, and he said, I hope I'm good enough for you tonight, or something like that, or I hope this is good enough. Uh, and I can't even remember the exact wording of it now. Age makes you forget stuff, even memorable stuff like that. Uh, but Jerry Lewis dedicated, and who can say this? The Jerry Lewis dedicated, you'll never walk alone to me, okay? But I never met the guy. Always always wanted to. I mean, I, I, I was always curious about him and what he would be like when he wasn't on and wasn't being Jerry Lewis. But anyway, so today Jerry Lewis died. And when I saw the thing come across, I felt sad. I felt sad because... All the people that I know, all the people I've loved over the years, whether I knew them personally or whether I admired them as performers or whether they were close friends, are dying off. And that's what happens as you get older. So when somebody like Jerry Lewis dies, a guy who literally raised me as a teenager, okay, uh, you can't do anything else but feel sad. I mean, he went at 91. Come on, it's good. I hope I last to 91. I hope I last to 100. But nevertheless, I felt sad because a little bit of me died with him. And uh, Jerry, you know, you were a force to be reckoned with when it came to comedy. And while I have to say that what you did, kind of I outgrew and my tastes got more mature, and they got better, and so you started looking sillier. Uh, I will never deny what you did for me in that theater in Marin County, in taking the pain away and making me realize the value, the true value of comedy. And for the time you sang, you'll never walk alone to me. Bye-bye, Jerry. You'll be missed. And thank you for joining me. Bye now.